Green fouls the Clippers' Blake Griffin and starts hearing chatter from LA's Paul Pierce on the bench. Chasing that farewell tour, they don't love you like that. You can't get no farewell tour, they don't love you like that. Remember back in 2017, Paul Pierce and Draymond Green got into a heated argument and it became a widely reported news story. This brought us this notorious quote from Draymond. In February of 2017, he said, quote, Don't get me wrong, Pierce was a damn good player. He had an amazing career, but people tend to forget he was struggling to get to the playoffs and was on the trading block every year. Then, all of a sudden, Ray Allen and KG showed up, let's not forget that. So when you come to me and you say you can't carry a team, but how good were you at carrying the team? And by the way, it's not really been proven that I can't, or that I don't. It's never really proven. Well, now with Steph Curry out for months with an injury, Clay being out all year from a torn ACL, and Kevin Durant no longer on the team, it's time for Draymond to shine. It's finally time for him to show what he can do as the lone star on the team, and if he can actually carry a team by himself. But from the looks of it, he cannot, and even worse, he's been struggling so much. It's totally ridiculous. Anyway, how's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today we're gonna take a look at Dre's 2019-20 season so far. Then, we'll take a look at another player, Bam Adebayo, and how he's also having an unexpected season, but in the opposite direction as he's been absolutely killing it. So starting off with Draymond, throughout the year, even when healthy, he's been a non-factor. His stats have been subpar, especially his scoring stats, as he's averaging the lowest field goal percentage and three-point percentage since his rookie season. Yet his usage rate and minutes have stayed relatively the same. The thing with Draymond is that, I guess nobody expected him to become a 20 points per game scorer or anything, but we did expect him to play better and to put up better numbers than before as he's now leading the team. However, he's simply not that player and he's not producing much at all when he's on the floor. Even after Curry's injury, we all knew the Warriors would be struggling to make the playoffs and obviously won't be at the top of the league anymore. But nobody thought they would struggle this much and fall to the bottom of the standings. Nobody expected Draymond to fade into the shadows instead of stepping up and taking over a larger role. In fact, five other players on the Warriors are averaging more points per game than Draymond. It's kind of weird because essentially the role players have taken over the scoring duties on the team. The Warriors' defensive rating has also tanked significantly. Additionally, the atmosphere in the Warriors' locker room has changed drastically over the last few years. It's no longer about competing for the title, but more about personal growth and development, especially with a lot of the newer, younger guys on the team. In this aspect, Draymond has been a great leader. He's not as frustrated with how bad the team is because he knows their situation is not the best. One time, a reporter asked Steve Kerr how Draymond is handling all of these losses, as he's obviously not used to it. Kerr said, quote, I think he's handling it just fine. He's a realist like I am. Nobody is preordained to get to play in the finals every year. It just doesn't work that way, and maybe we were due for a year like this. Rookies Kai Bowman and Alan Smilagic have both praised Draymond and they look up to him as a mentor. Bowman said, I've never really had anybody sit us down and talk to us like that, just to help us understand what was happening. Alan, a 19-year-old Serbian player, said, I really like to talk to him because he really wants to help me. The way he talks to me and everything, it really helps me. It helps me develop into a better player. He told me points are going to come, that I'm young, but that he likes the way I play, and the way I want to play. With the way the season has been going, I'd say it's safe to say Draymond is not the type of player who could ever carry a team by himself. So that theory by Paul Pierce turned out to be correct. But that does not mean his value as a player has decreased. He can't contribute that much to a team with below average players, but he's better at raising a team ceiling, especially for a team that has a lot of firepower already. Carrying an entire offense though? Nah, that's out of the question. I'd imagine it's similar with a guy like Dennis Rodman or Ben Wallace. They'll never be able to carry an offense, but they'll always be the perfect final piece to a team that needs defense, versatility, and all the hustle plays that a team needs to become a contender. 
Next up, we gotta talk about Bam Adebayo, who is, in my opinion, the biggest surprise of the entire season so far. He's averaging a ridiculous stat line, 16 and 10, over 4 assists and over a block and a steal a game. He's also shooting a career-best field goal percentage and true shooting percentage. He's even 6th among all centers in real plus minus. In my opinion, he's definitely one of the frontrunners to win the Most Improved Player Award. Statistically, and from the eye test, Bam made a drastic jump from his previous season. While it was expected that he would get more playing time and a bigger role after Miami traded away Hassan Whiteside, nobody thought he'd be this good. He's now the second best player on a Miami Heat team that's been crushing expectations. And that's why their entire team has been the biggest surprise this season. Maybe even more so than Bam himself. Preseason predictions from 538.com calculated that Miami would finish the season with a 41-41 record and barely make the playoffs. Now, they're obviously on pace to obliterate that prediction. What's shocking is that Bam literally got better in every aspect of the game. He's been working on his post game and his finishing ability at the rim, which he's gotten significantly better at. He's now hitting over 75% of his shots between 0 and 3 feet, a big jump from his previous two seasons of 64% and 71% respectively. Now he's equipped with a short mid-range game and can hit those baby hooks and jump shots from the paint, as he's shooting 47% between 3 and 16 feet. As for his passing, he's shown flashes of his good passing skills in the past, but now it's being put on full display. He's an excellent passer out of the high post, out of the elbows, and he does a good number of dribble handoffs as well. It's truly been a phenomenal expansion of his game. Defensively, that was his niche back when he was a rookie, and despite getting a much bigger role on offense, Bam's defense is still there. In an article by Michael Shapiro of Sports Illustrated, he stated, Adebayo isn't fooled by traps and additional rotational help. He diagnoses the situation, then makes his move in a split section. It's a controlled attack and Adebayo is disciplined as only a Spolstra disciple can be. It's rare for a young big to handle such responsibility with ease. Adebayo's evolving offensive arsenal has opened a Miami offense that risked a spacing problem in 2019-20. He started his career as a rim-rolling center and Adebayo is still impressive in that regard. But Adebayo isn't a mere finisher this season. He's arguably the fulcrum of Miami's attack, an adept ball handler with a vision of a quality point guard. Perhaps nobody has praised him more than his coach, Spolstra. Eric Spolstra said, quote, Offensively, we're running the offense through Adebayo more and more. We started that process last year, but the last three months of the season, he's really improved his playmaking and his passing. It seems like every month I can give him something more on his plate and he's been able to take on all of that. In such a short period of time, the transformation of Adebayo has been crazy. He went from being a promising, raw young prospect to a complete player, a legitimate all-star candidate who's now a cornerstone of the Heat franchise. While there have been many other young players, especially from the 2017 class who made significant strides in their game, Bam has a real chance of finishing his career as the best player from that class, if his current career trajectory continues. Looking back at his draft day comparison from NBADraft.net, it seems laughable now. He's arguably better than Markeith Morris and Tristan Thompson have ever been. In other draft reports, Bam was scouted to be mainly a hyper-athletic pick-and-roll finisher in the tune of guys like DeAndre Jordan or Steven Adams. But now, he's way, way more than that and is one of the more versatile centers we've seen in recent history. Anyway, that's all folks, that sums up what's been going on with Draymond Green and Bam Adebayo. Two players who've been having unexpected seasons in opposite ways and both have been very surprising in how they're playing. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on these two players and their current situations. Do you see Bam becoming an all-star soon and what do you think of Draymond Green? Do you think the Warriors will ever consider trading him? Let me know your thoughts and thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.